Yeah, last time we discussed on um, the direct online starter. So then also I posted a video on YouTube and Facebook on um, the simulation of um, the forward and reverse starter. So we get to understand so that when we dive into explaining the forward and reverse starter, so we will understand how it functions so that we carry out our installation works on site perfectly. On the right, on the left hand side, we have uh, the power circuit. This is the power circuit, and then on the right hand side is the control circuit. So now, what happens here is, we look at the control circuit. So what we will do now is um, explaining how the control circuit functions, and then while we are explaining, we'll be seeing how current will be flowing to the power circuit and then getting to the point of the electric motor, and then you see how the motor will be rotating. So we'll start from the top. This is our thermal relay, as you can see. The same way that we had on uh, the direct online starter. So this is the thermal relay, and the next is a close contact, which is a push button, the stop push button. So this is a stop push button, so we represent it as a close contact. The next now is um, the start push button, which we is represented as a, an open contact, which is S1. And then we have a close contact of KM2. As we keep driving, I'll explain to you guys why we use the close contact of KM2 instead of KM1, or instead of contactor 1 or contactor 2. And then we move now down. This is a coil, which is A1 and A2, K1. So move to the other side. S2 is going to be an, it's an open contact which represents a start push button of the contactor KM1. The next on our right, which is a KM2, this is an open contact of the contactor. It moves down straight. We have a KM11, which is a close contact of the KM1. Move down as well, we have this is the coil of K2 or KM2 which is represented as, um, at the top, we have A1 and A2. So if you look at the contactor, you notice that if you look at the side of the coil, you see two contacts. So you find out, you see um, A1 and A2. So at the top, you're going to connect your live contact or your face. And then at the bottom, which is the A2, that is where you're going to connect the neutral, as you can see here. So we start now from the S1 contact, which is the start push button. So when you press or an action on S1, which is a close contact of the forward contactor. So when you press, what happens, you notice that this contact is going to close, but it's not permanently closed since it's a push button. So when you press, you notice that when your hand is, uh, when your hand is released from that push button, the contact as well retracts back to its original position. So current now flows since you press, current is going to flow, since we had an action on that S1, it closes that contact temporarily, and then enabling current flowing from upstream going to downstream. So it gets to this point as well, which is KM21. Since the contact is closed, it moves down now to the coil, and the coil will be energized of K1. This is contactor 1 or KM1. So the contact, the, 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 the coil of contactor 1 will energize. So when we energize, we move back now to the law of a contactor when its coil is energized or when sufficient voltage is supplied to the coil. What happens is all its contacts that are associated to that contactor are going to change their states. So we have normal open contact is going to change to normal close, where we have normal close contact is going to change to normal open. Perfect, that is it. Okay, we now move. You notice that we start looking at all the contacts that are associated to the contactor one. So we now start looking at KM11. So this is a contact of KM1. This contact is going to open, as you can see. It's going to open as such. And then we look up here now, we're going to see KM1, which is the same contact of KM1. So it's going to close. Initially, it was normal open, now it closes. So you notice now, as our hand was released from the push button, S1, which is a, a start push button. So if you release, it opens the contact back, which goes back to the normal position of that push button. 
and not allowing current flowing from upstream going to downstream. Now, why do we have this contactor coil remain energized due to this contact of KM1? So that's the reason why you find some books will be calling it a hold on contact. So enabling current flowing from upstream going to downstream and then keeping the coil energized continuously. So we have this coil remain energized and then this contact here is open. The reason why this we, we place a contact here, which as we keep moving, you're going to understand exactly why I place the KM1 contact in the direction of the KM2. This is so that if in case, probably someone comes and uh, want to put on the, the, the contactor coil KM2 by pressing the start push button S2, it will not allow current flowing from upstream coming downstream because the coil of KM1 is energized already, which has opened all its associated contacts. So this is the reason why we place this contact here so that we don't have both coils energized, enabling the motor to be confused. Let's put it that way. Okay, now we move <clears throat> to this point now. See, since we have this coil energized and it remains energized due to this hold on contact, which is closed at this point. So now we have current flowing from this point coming to this level. So since we have current flowing and then it gets to this point of the power diagram. So since this coil was energized and it's still energized, all its associated contacts now are going to change their states. So it means KM1, which is from the power side, which is KM1, is going to close its contact as you can see. This contact closes now enabling current flowing from upstream going to downstream. It gets to the level of the thermal relay and then move straight now to the motor and the motor starts running in four direction. So the motor now is rotating in four direction. And then also we have this mechanical interlock in this. This is a question which I wanted to ask you guys. And I think I posted that on Facebook and YouTube as well, which I asked a question on that. So I'd like you guys to go hit on the YouTube and uh, Facebook and comment on that so that we get to discuss further. So um, on this on this point now we have our, our, our motor now is rotating in four direction. So now to stop it now, what do, what do we do? We go back now to S1. This is a contact, which is um, a push button, which is a stop push button. So we, when we press the stop push button, our hand releases back, it enables, it, it stops current from flowing from upstream coming to downstream. So if, it, if your hand is released from it, it goes back to initial state, which is the normal close, it has already cut off current from flowing from upstream going to downstream. By so doing, this contact top coil will de-energize, which is K1 of KM1. So now what happens is all its associated contacts now are going to change their states now going back to the normal state. So now what happens is, you look at KM1, this contact now is going to remain open. It will come back open to its normal state. And then we have KM1 as well, which is here. It goes back to normal close to its normal position. This is very important. So now the next part now is, we want to drive now the motor in reverse direction. So now when we press S2, which is the push button of, or the start push button of KM2. So when we press this push button, it closes the contact, enabling current flowing from upstream coming to downstream. So since we have all this contact which are closed, current flows down and gets to the coil of KM2 which is K2. It energizes this coil and all its associated contacts of this contactor coil will energize, will, uh, uh, change its states from normal open to normal close and from normal close to normal open. It's very important. So while all this, the, the contacts changes the state, you, you find out that we have KM1, KM2 here, which is associated to KM2 or K2 of this coil. So this contact is going to be closed and then what happens here, this contact is going to open as well since it's KM21. This is a contact of KM2. The contact is going to open, as you can see. So now we have current now flowing through and then coming to this coil. And this coil remains energized even though our hand is relieved from S2 contact of the push button, which is a start push button, enabling current or 
stopping current from flowing from the upstream coming to downstream. But the reason why we have this contactor coil remain energized is because of this hold on contact of.